International Math Olympiad 2014, Problem 5. For each positive integer n, the Bank of Cape Town issues coins of denominations 1 nth. Given a finite collection of such coins, of not necessarily different denominations, with total value at most 99 plus 1 half, prove that it's possible to split this collection into 100 or fewer groups, such that each group has total value at most 1. This problem is a good exercise of using logic for mathematical proof. We can reformulate this problem using letter n instead of concrete number 100. In this case, we can use a method of mathematical induction in which we should verify this statement for a couple of first values of n and then assume that this statement is true for n minus 1 and prove that it's true for n. The statement in this more general form is written on the diagram. If a set of coins t has total value not greater than n minus one half, then this set t can be partitioned into j partial sets t i so that j is not greater than n and the value of each partial set t i is not greater than one. For n equals 1, the statement is trivial. In this case, the total value of coins in set T doesn't exceed 1 minus 1 half equals 1 half. And, of course, this initial set T itself is the single set whose total value is not greater than 1. If n equals 2, there are two cases. The first case is when the set of coins includes a coin with denomination 1. In this case, the partitioning it in two sets is trivial. The coin with denomination 1 goes into one set, and the rest of the coins go to the second set, and this is the partitioning into two sets, in which the value of each set doesn't exceed 1. If the set of coins doesn't have the coin with denomination 1, then the largest denomination of coins in it may be 1 half. Then let's arrange the coins in the initial set T in any order. If its total value is not greater than 1, then we already have one set of coins whose value doesn't exceed 1. If its total value is greater than 1, then let's select the first coin in this sequence on which the partial sum exceeds 1. Then all the coins preceding that coin should be included in the first set and the bordering coin should be included in the second set with the rest of the coins. Since the sum of the remaining coins does not exceed one half and the bordering coin does not exceed one half, their total value does not exceed one, which gives us the partitioning of the initial set into two partial sets with values not greater than one. Now let's formulate the statement for mathematical induction. We want to prove that if a statement of this problem is true for n minus 1, it's also true for n. Let's prove it by contradiction. So our assumption is that the statement is true for n minus 1 and that it's not true for n. How do we formulate the negation of this straight statement? There exists at least one set of coins T for number n for which such partitioning does not exist, which means that no matter how we partition this set so that partial sets have value not exceeding 1, then the number of the partial sets will be greater than n. The next step is in this set T for n for which the described partitioning does not exist, Let's replace all subsets of k coins with denomination 1k with one coin of denomination 1 in this entire set. And also, let's find all pairs of coins with denomination 1 over 2k and replace them with one coin 1 over k. The result will be the new set with the same total value but it is certain that in this resulting set, the maximum number of coins with denomination 1 kth will be k minus 1, 
and the maximum number of coins with denomination 1 over even number will be 1. Now let's start removing coins with the smallest denomination and let's keep doing it as long as there is still no partitioning into smaller sets with value not greater than 1. Based on our induction assumption, this last set for which such partitioning does not exist has value greater than n minus 1 minus 1 half. Otherwise, this set would have such partitioning. And let number m be the largest number for which coins with denomination 1 divided by m exist in this set. If we now remove one coin 1 over m from this set, then by definition the remaining set can be partitioned into not more than n sets with values not greater than 1. If we add 1 over m to the total value of this remaining set, then it's still not greater than n minus 1 half. On the other hand, it's greater than 1m plus n times 1 minus 1 over m, because the value of each partial set is greater than 1 minus 1 over m. Otherwise, the coin 1 over m could be included into that partial set which still would be not greater than 1. By doing simple algebraic transformations, we can obtain the key property of this minimal set T that we have constructed. Number M in it is strictly less than 2 times N minus 1. Now it's clear that the total value of our minimal set T is less than or equal to the total of all coins with denominations that can possibly be included in this set. It consists of maximum one coin of denomination whose fraction has even denominator. And for the coins whose denomination equals fraction with odd denominator, the number of such coins can be this odd number minus one. And because of the limitation that we have found that m is strictly less than 2n minus 2, the sums have limits from 1 to n minus 2. We can combine these two sums into one sum with limits from 2 to n minus 2. In this case, we will have to add to this combined sum number 1 half, which was the first member of the first sequence, and 2n minus 4 over 2n minus 3, which is the last member of the second sequence. And the formula that we have in the sum implies that each member of the sum is less than 1, since if we add 1 divided by 2i minus 1, this will give us 1. And we have to subtract this number, and 1 over 2i minus 1 over 2i minus 1 is negative number. Also, of course, 2n minus 4 over 2n minus 3 is less than 1. The result is that the total value of our set of coins is strictly less than 1 half plus n minus 2. Or we can write it as n minus 1 minus 1 half which contradicts our assumption that this total must be strictly greater than n minus 1 minus 1 half. We are done.